Fatty acids will travel through the bloodstream, and usually they are attached to a carrier protein like albumin, and then they get delivered to the cells of our tissues. Once inside the cell, within the cytoplasm, they get attached to a molecule of coenzyme A. So that coenzyme A pictured here attacks to carbonyl carbon and kicks off that OH group. And that reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme fatty acyl coenzyme A synthetase. And it results in a molecule that looks just like the fatty acid, but instead of the OH, we have the coenzyme A attached to it. And we call that molecule fatty acyl coenzyme A. Fatty acyl coenzyme A is in the cytoplasm, and then it has to get transferred to the matrix of the mitochondria. And this is a multi-step process that requires multiple enzymes, but the only one I would worry about is this one right here, which is CPT1, or carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1, and it's also called carnitine acyl transferase. This is also the rate-limiting step of the entire fatty acid oxidation process. Once we're inside the matrix, we're gonna undergo the actual oxidation process. Everything from here on out takes place in the matrix, and what we're gonna do is oxidize this chain of carbons and eventually produce a molecule of coenzyme A. And you really don't need to worry too much about how this molecule changes from step to step, but you do wanna focus on all of the byproducts produced. In our first step, FAD gets reduced to FADH2, and the FADH2 goes to the electron transport chain. This process oxidizes the carbon chain and turns this bond here into a double bond, which is a classic sign that oxidation has occurred. Next, a water molecule is added across that bond. So there's an OH from that water molecule, and there is the other H. After that, an NAD plus gets reduced to become an NADH, which then goes to the electron transport chain. Since the NAD plus got reduced, then we have to figure out what got oxidized, and that's this bond to the OH. It becomes a double bond to the oxygen, which is another classic sign that oxidation has occurred. After that, a coenzyme A is going to come in and attack the carbon on that carbonyl group. And that's going to kick off everything to the left of that carbonyl carbon. And that molecule that's kicked off is acetyl coenzyme A, which then goes to the Krebs cycle. Notice that the resulting molecule after it's attacked by that coenzyme A looks just like the molecule that we started with, only it's two carbons shorter. And then that molecule is going to go through the exact same process that the original molecule went through. And every time it goes through the process, it produces one FADH2, one NADH, and one acetyl coenzyme A, which then goes to the Krebs cycle. Since acetyl coenzyme A is two carbons, that means that every time we go through this process, our original molecule loses two carbons. And you can do some easy math to then figure out how many acetyl coenzyme A's can be created per fatty acid. So let's just say we have a 16 carbon fatty acid divided by two, which then gives us eight molecules of acetyl-CoA that can be produced.